Hello everybody, and welcome back to Pokemon Legends Arceus, episode number 8. Last time, we beat up our first alpha Pokemon, and made a new camp. Sounds like Kamado wants our attention. So let's see what this is about. Hello, Rai. Do you need to get dressed? Sure. Look who's being punctual! Finally realized you're wasting Almighty Sinnoh's precious time by bowing to a sham? Okay. <laughs> there you go again, insisting on your false image of Almighty Sinnoh as a ruler of time. My people follow the true Almighty Sinnoh, the Font of all creation and ruler of space. Ah, you could have all the space there is and still not know what to do with it. Excuse me? I'm really suggesting that you better uh, make better use of our, uh, your time than we make a vast to Sui's space. That was my brain did not want to process that sentence for some reason. Better than some, it's a miracle you showed up on time, oh mighty leader of the Pearl Clan. Oh, I see. Where, okay, I. Probably should have seen this a bit sooner, but hello, the Diamond and Pearl Dialga and Helgea. I worried you'd get lost in the pointlessly vast space you're so fond of and never show up. Me, you get lost in Almighty Sinnoh's great gift to the Pearl Clan and our world's very basis. You wish. Very heated argument. <laughs> I wish I hadn't let myself get dragged into arguing with you. Almighty Sinnoh, forgive me. What a waste of time. I'm off to come under Kamado's office. I believe it was you who started this. The music. <laughs> music fit that perfectly. Uh, just another day with those two, I see. That man's named a uh, Adaman. He's the leader of the Diamond Clan. They put a lot of importance on time, as you can probably tell. And the girl is Irida. Iridia? No. I put an extra I in there. Irida. Irida? Uh. I'll get a name right one of these times. <laughs> the leader of the Pearl Clan. All about space. You heard what she called it, right? Our world is very basis. Whenever they run into each other, those same arguments flare up. Sometimes. Uh, seems like they're... They've inherited some bad blood from their predecessor's strife. Ah oh, well, not a problem. We all have problems if you don't get yourself to the commander's office. Oopkeep. Dialga, Palkia, and Arceus. Oink. What is this? Uh, oh, this is the quest. Uh, were either of those things on the... this? No. So those are new ones I can take. So let's do that. Bothersome Badoof. It seems a band of Bothersome Badoof keeps sneaking into the village and causing trouble. Talk to Tsumugi. Tsumugi? Uh, from the security core and see if you can help set things in order. Here. Uh, playing with Drifloon. Seems several people have spotted a Drifloon playing with one of the village child. Wait. Wasn't there something in, like, one of the Pokédex entries about Drifloon, like, stealing children or something like that? Uh... I don't remember. Vicky from the security corps can tell you more. Speak with her and get to the bottom of this. Later. Shall do that later. There's the, <laughs> the Oshawa's just Professor the the You might want to give Oshawa a bit more a bit more headroom. Now, come on. This is... This is inhumane. Oops, sorry. Run up 
the stairs. Up another floor, correct? Yeah, this is the sumo guy. What do you intend to do about that cleaver, Commander Kamado? You may be descended from a warrior of Almighty Sinnoh, but look at the mess he's causing. We can't sit back and let him rage on. You do get right to the point, Adamon. Time wasted is lost. Well, tell me, what would you have us do? Cleaver is a precious lord of the Pearl Clan, is he not? That's the point. My clan can't intervene directly where a lord of the Pearl's clan is concerned. If my people were to do something, our two clans might end up back at each other's throats, just like they used to be. But even folk of the galaxy team have been wounded, haven't they? Seems someone's got to do something here. Who then? Would the Diamond Clan have the Pearl Clan bring down one of its own honorable, honored nobles? I don't believe I said that. Thought it, maybe. Might as well have said it, you fool. <laughs> Look, we don't even know what drove Lord Cleaver into such a violent frenzy. Like, I know what know that myself. This is a first as far as my clan knows, too. Uh, I see you've arrived. Hello. <laughs> this is Sandrew, the newest member of our survey corps. Aha, I hear from my, you've earned Wiredeer's wire Wiredeer's <laughs> Wiredeer's favor. Good to finally meet you, stranger from the rift. I am Adamon, leader of the Diamond Clan, if you want to be formal. But that's a mouthful. Just call me Adamon. You came from beyond the space-time rift. Could it be, uh... Could you be from the space where Almighty Sinnoh is said to reside? I'm Irida, leader of the Pearl Clan. Caution and foresight are my watchwords. Which is why I have trouble believing such a tale. Could you really have passed through that? Could you have really passed through that rift? I have a proposition. Why not send this one to study Cleavor before deciding what must be done? You'd send a stranger who supposedly fell from the rift to study Cleavor? This newcomer with no experience? Says the leader with almost no experience. Being a good leader isn't a matter of time. It's a matter of embracing Hisui's vastness without fear. Well then, there you have it. If how new you are doesn't matter, then let's give give the kid her chance. I'm sold. Uh, I'm sold, Commander. Let's try this your way. This should be fun. I'll get to see how good you galaxy folk really are. With all your weird ways, putting Pokemon in those strange balls and what have you. I hope practice bothers me. Almighty Sinnoh made Hisui vast so Pokemon could live freely throughout. We want to stand alongside Pokemon, not count ourselves above them. We do not use Pokeballs from a desire to control our Pokemon, only so that we can live together. I'll have to show you what we can do. This is your mission now, Sandrew. I order you to study Cleavor and help us find the truth of this situation. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember that you are a stranger who appeared one day out of the very sky above us. People are naturally suspicious of your presence here. If you wish to be fully accepted and trusted, you must work hard. Work up yourself to the very bone. The Frenzy of the Lord of the Woods. That is a long title. Well, that's settled. There's no time like the present. The Lord of the Woods, Cleavor, is descended from a Pokemon that was blessed with Almighty Sinnoh's own power. No other Pokemon you've yet encountered can compare to his strength. Be warned. Alrighty. Listen to me. The Galaxy Expedition Team has come to the Hisui region as a group of outsiders. Some might call even call us interlopers. We mustn't do anything to threaten our relations with the Diamond and Pearl Clans, understand? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Cover the details of the new mission. Okay. How's it going? Anything in here I can look at? No. Door. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm uh, not sure what I was expecting, to be honest. On the roof. Nice balcony area. 
Cool. <laughs> I wasn't sure entirely what I was expecting when you walk up to a door and press A to leave. Okay, let's head downstairs and actually continue our mission. Or start it. Get briefed. Whatever. Hello. Your Abra's still here. Ah, good, you're you're already here. Professor Leventon. The brief the briefing, if you please. Yes, let's get right to it. So, Sandrew, I understand you've been requested to find out the cause of Cleaver's frenzied state. But, as you're aware by now, Cleaver's a mighty thing, nigh invincible even. The security corps tried throwing pokeballs at Cleaver when they were attacked. But I'm afraid they didn't even come close to catching him. Seems he's a fair thicker opponent than the, uh, even those aggressive species of Pokemon that cannot be caught outside of battle once you've ri they're riled. I'd like you to perfectly, uh, I'd like to be perfectly clear on this point. This mission will put you in extreme danger. Do you believe you can handle it? Yeah. Very well. Let's go over the particulars. The Diamond and Pearl clans re uh, revere their nobles because they believe these Pokémon serve their almighty Sinnoh. They leave offerings to express their gratitude to these Pokémon, locations they call the Noble's Seat. So perhaps a good starting point for our research could be to find out what sorts of offerings they normally leave for this Cleavor. Oh, hi. Listen, this this rift in space seems like it, it connects this world to the other world other whatever. <laughs> that world might be where Almighty Sinnoh itself resides. The true Almighty Sinnoh, that is. The one that rules over time. So if you fell through the space-time rift, that might mean you traveled through time. By Almighty Sinnoh's own power. Think of it. You must have been just swimming in his divine might. Well, I've got a favor to ask of you, oh amazing time traveler. Don't just study Cleaver, quell its frenzy. Well, you certainly caught us at a good time, young Adamon. We were just discussing our next steps with regard to this whole Cleaver situation. Oh, you must be that Galaxy Team scholar I've heard about. Good to meet you, Mr. Professor. Share some of that knowledge with me sometime. Now, let me elaborate a little. Those Pearl Clan types have a lot of respect for Cleaver. You heard his title, Lord of the Woods. I'm sure they'd rather get it get this under control too, but it's hard for them to come right out and ask uh, those of the galaxy team, of all people, for help. And the truth is, we in the Diamond Clan have a similar problem on our hands. A Pokemon dear to us, off in the mountains, has flown in the same type of frenzy as Cleavor. Now, there's certainly bad blood between us and the Pearl Clan, but still. We've all got to share Hisui, and that means we have to tackle our problems together. But there's, but there aren't many people standing up to such powerful Pokemon. You're the best hope we've got. You'll find Cleavor at Grand Tree Arena, that's in the very heart of the Heartwoods. His warden is a boy named Leon. Leon is a brilliant child, but also a bit, uh, well, sometimes brilliance can be blinding, you know. I'll tell you about his beloved Cleavor, whether you wish him to or not. Anyways, I'm sure that you're up to the challenge, so we'll be counting on you. See you later. Wow, he just said his piece and then vanished. He must just value his time that much, I guess. Adamant and Mai aren't weren't wrong, you know. If we're to, you're to study and perhaps even quell Cleavor, you'd best start by visiting his abode. Now that we've got the Heights camp, it should come in handy for getting to the Grand Tree Arena. And don't forget the visit to visit the pastures. Choosing your Pokemon team carefully makes a difference. Whew. That's like... This is gonna be... Hello, Abra. Cool. That's gonna be the majority of this episode is... Just going to be... Dialogue, isn't it? Ushda. Oh, 
Hi. <laughs> Hello, yes. You like more space in there? Who wouldn't like more? Yeah, I can read sentences. My brain's dying. <laughs> Reading too much. <laughs> You can carry around even more in that satchel of yours if you learn the trick to packing things in. I can teach you if you'd like. What do you say? Yeah, sure. Teaching fee is neat 100 Pokey Dollars. Uh, yes please. Perfect, then lend me your ear a moment. You made space to keep one more kind of item in your satchel. And that's all there is to it. You see how much more you can fit in by packing things rightly? You want to be able to carry even more things. There's more I can teach you. What do you say? Uh, 200 Poké Dollars. Sure. More items. Uh, is the next one 300? Yes. Please. I like this. Honestly, I'm just going to kind of leave it there. Okay, so what does our satchel look like now? Okay, so it just expands downward. Fantastic. I'm going to actually finish that row off and just get two more. Assuming it's going to be 400 and 500. 400, it's looking like it. So, with this, we shall hopefully be able to... Finish off that... Yeah, finish off that row in our bag. Take a look at it now. We should have full the row, which is amazing, because this is starting to fill up a little quickly. I know we have all of the... Things, the uh, like item storage, like in our little house area and at the camps, but it'd be nice to be able to just carry more stuff. All right, um, what does our map look like? We have a couple new request, new request, new request, new request. <laughs> Let's go around and collect some requests. Um, there we go. Hello. You there, you seem like someone who enjoys a bit of crafting. Do you think you could help me out with something? I'd be very, very grateful if you tried to craft something use as something using a special rope I came up a special recipe I came up with. Why did my how would my brain get rope from what? <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, here's the recipe. Okeshi dolls. Um, interesting. Three logs of wood. See, I knew the wood would come in helpful. Wood. Useful. This is the recipe I've named Pokeshi Dolls. I invented them, you see, as a special item that we can make in this village. I'd love to have you craft one and show it to me. I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. Uh, I can't remember. Do we have... We have exactly... Th see? All calculated. Everything planned out totally. All a part of the... The master plan. A wooden toy carved in the image of a Pokemon. It can be sold to the general store. There we go. Let's craft one. And give it to him. Hmm? What's this? Why, that's a Pokeshi doll if I ever saw one. Please, let me have a closer look. Amazing! Just look how smoothly you've carved those curves. Your attentive carving shows you put love and care into your handiwork. And these colors are definitely... You've definitely given it a vivid look, that's for sure. Yes, these hues must be the very shade of your inner strength and passion. Not to mention these Pukeshi doll is... This Pukeshi doll is perfectly balanced. At a glance, you think it's sure to fall over and yet it stubbornly remains upright. Phew. Thank you. I saved your Pukeshi doll to my heart's content. We use the same recipe and yet your Pokeshi doll has a completely different feel than mine. Here, I'll give you a Pokeshi doll I made. I took great care in crafting it. So have a look and see how it differs from the one you made. 
Oh, okay. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take like a five minute break here. I'm gonna cut and take a five minute break. I need water. <laughs> I need water. My throat is dying. <laughs> My throat is dying from all this. <laughs> all this speaking in this episode. Oh, So I'll be back in like five minutes, grab some water and uh, we'll check out this request then. Okay. Just remember everyone out there. Just remember everyone out there. Stay hydrated. It helps. Stay hydrated. Hello. Listen here, Survey Corps kid. I saw the darndest thing. I was scouring the heartwood for crops we could grow in the fields here when I saw it. This Pokemon called Cherim. Cherim? Cherim? Whatever. Uh, changed its appearance before my very eyes. It was in the evening. The light was getting dim. All of a sudden, Karim's petals closed right up so it looked like nothing but a little flower bud. Wow, I thought. I just witnessed the miracle of evolution. But the next morning, when I came back to check on that Karim, it was right back to full bloom. But why would it bloom just to close back up? Is that how evolution works? Or was I the change? Or was the change I saw something different? When you finish Karim's Pokedex entry, let me have a look, would ya? Bloom or not to bloom. Okay. Let's take a look at this other request over here. It's kind of gathering a bunch of requests before we head out. Oops, we're gonna get a cutscene anyways. How are things, my good friend? Hello. I certainly hope you've put that secret backstrike technique I taught you to good use. Either way, I have some super potions here, just for you. Oh, think nothing of it. Have a good Survey Corps out and about. Having the Survey Corps out and about, uh, stretching Pokemon is great for business, you know. Supporting you now is actually an investment in my own fortunes. Oh, thank you. Three super potions. And now I must depart. There are ruins that are just calling to me. Huh. Okay, that's nice of him. Still not entirely sure what to think about. But Volo over there, this is... I don't know, there's, there's something to thought about him in my opinion. He kind of reminds me, Bizarre, I'm trying to still trying to put my finger on it, but he kind of reminds me of the a little bit of the Happy Mask Salesman from Majora's Mask. Which isn't a great character to be reminded of, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I think it just has something to do with his ever-cheerful mood, plus the backpack on his shoulder at all times, plus the constant appearing and disappearing from thin air, seemingly. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at this request, and I'm going to end this episode off. Hello, Andra. Alright, if a Pokemon starts eyeing me, I'll fling an Auron Berry, then run while it's distracted. If stick to the plan, I'll be fine. Oh, Survey Corps. I was headed out to the Fieldlands to go gather Tumble Stones, but I haven't gotten as many Auron Berries as I'd like. Are you familiar with Auron Berries? It restores some HP to Pokemon that eat them, as you might imagine. Pokemon tend to be very interested in them. You see where I'm going with this? Throwing Auron Berries is a great way to distract and avoid wild Pokemon. They're indispensable. With that in mind, could I trouble you to gather five Auron Berries for me? Yes, I shall. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> Imagine, just like, imagine the situation in real life of someone's like, hey, could you grab this thing for me? The other person, okay, walks like seven steps away, turns around, comes back, and hands you the item. <laughs> I'd feel a lot better having more Oran berries. Would you be able to give me just five of them? Sure, here you go.
gratefully accept. Gosh, I can't believe you went to the trouble of finding these just for me. <laughs> I took seven steps backwards, turned around, came back, and ha handed them to you. Happy to help. I'll support his delusions. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh, you're nice for someone who fell out of the sky. Let's just tuck these away in my satchel. Won't let your kindness go to waste. Wish me luck with those tumble stones. Revives. Ooh, that's nice. Especially since I believe it was they require the vivid chokes to make. Yeah. So that's nice that we got items in return for something that requires rarer items to craft. That is exceptional. Anyways. That will be this episode of Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's a lot of dialogue, my goodness. <laughs> my throat is dying. This is like 14 minutes straight of just dialogue or something crazy. Anyways, not a whole lot, like, there's a bunch of story stuff this time, so not a whole lot of action, but still. Advanced the story, got a new objective, found some more requests to do, fulfilled some of them that we could do here. I'd call that a pretty successful episode, nonetheless. So anyways, thank you very much for watching. And... Hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.